we're back out here at the Big Lake once again. And today, we're talking about the subtle differences between how you work your bait and how a pro works theirs. And how those differences can literally mean the difference between a skunk and a double-digit monster. Also, we're going to be announcing the winner of the big giveaway. So stick around. And now, without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for. The winner of the hashtag Big Giveaway prize pack. And here's your winner. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as that water temperature begins to warm up, as we move closer to the spring here in the southeast, that pre-spawn has really started to take hold. The rest of the country, well, you're going to be hot on our heels, and you will be into the pre-spawn and the spawn before you know it. Now, one of the best parts of that, well, we get to expand our bait selection, our presentation choices. See, in the wintertime, we're throwing stuff like this all over the place, wacky rigs. Now, they work great all year, but this little do-nothing worm, this little do-nothing five-inch stick bait, this is a killer in the wintertime because those cold bass, they don't have to exert any energy. They can just go after it. And then you've got, well, you've got the mainstay of wintertime, right? A jerkbait, a hard jerkbait, a suspending jerkbait that you can twitch around in the water and then just let sit there. And it's about this that I kind of want to talk about because there's something about this jerkbait that a lot of guys, they don't really understand. They kind of miss the point. And that is a jerkbait is more about sudden changes of direction than it is anything else. And if you ask any pro angler, they will tell you. It's all about changes in direction. If you can get your bait to suddenly change direction, then you can really initiate some really hardcore strikes. You can really activate those bass. And that's why a jerk bait can be so effective, not just in the wintertime, but all year long. Because essentially it is a change of direction bait, isn't it? All it does is change directions back and forth, back and forth. The only difference is in the wintertime, well, you got to pause it for a little while to let those bass catch up. In the summertime, not so much, you know. So that brings me to this guy right here, a lipless crankbait. Now, this is one of the ones that I modified. This is a Cotton Cordell a Super Spot. This is one of the ones I've drilled the hole in the bottom and filled with super glue and baking soda so it has a lot less rattles. And the reason why I do that is because I want it to be a more subtle presentation. That flat side is going to give it a flatter type of wobble. It's not going to be the wide wobble that you would get from something like a square bill. And that's, for me, that is kind of what I'm trying to go for this time of year. I prefer to fish a flat-sided, flat type of crank in the spring. And a lipless crank? A lipless crank is absolute money. If you are ever going to tie on a lipless crank and give them a try, now, in the springtime, in the pre-spawn, that's the best time because they work so well. And it's not really what you're thinking about how to work them or, you know, even that old thing about red color, right? I started out today working this red. This is a Six Cents Quake 70 and this thing is gorgeous. Look at the colors on this thing. Beautiful. And it was doing work for me. It was great, but it wasn't just the color that was getting me bites. It wasn't just the appearance of how that bait looked. It was how I was working it. I was working it in such a way to create changes in direction. I was doing to create deflections, movement, one way or the other, you know, crank it just a little bit and then do some things to create some changes in direction, which we'll go over. You know, it's a great way to catch bass. Those bass, whenever you are working a bait that way, they can give you such a huge strike. I mean, it's a no-doubter. You will feel them inhale that thing as they key off on it. And that's what happened with this little guy today. This little guy right here caught the biggest fish of the day. And it was 
doing a certain type of retrieve, which we're going to go out on the water and we're going to talk about. I'm going to show you just exactly what I was doing. But there's another type of bait that you might find surprising that you can get to use a change of direction, and that is a jig. Now, granted, it's a different type of change of direction. It's a different type of motion, but it still works nonetheless. Bass find it enticing, and it seems very realistic. It makes this jig come alive in that water. And that that's what we're looking for, aren't we? We're trying to take a piece of plastic and metal, and we're trying to convince something that is alive that this thing, which isn't alive, is food. That's bass fishing in a nutshell, right? If we can convince those bass that this is food, then we can get them to strike it. Or, at the very least, we can get their curiosity peaked, and they want to bite it to see if it's something that they want to eat. But the point is, is you can work these in a type of way that will give them a fluid motion. It will give them a little bit more lifelike. And this is something that the old timers used to do a lot. You know, it's something that I used to watch the old anglers do. And I'm seeing pros doing it more and more. They've been doing it for years. And this is something that they sit on. You don't hear them talking about it. You don't hear them talking about these types of retrieves. Now, on the lipless crankbait, the one type of retrieve that we're going to talk about, we're going to go out on the water, I'm going to show you just exactly what I mean, and you're probably pretty familiar with it. I mean, it's fairly common sense, but there's a second retrieve that nobody knows about, but this is something that the pros keep in their arsenal. As a matter of fact, when I told somebody about this retrieve last year, I had a pro angler, and I'm not naming names, but I had a pro angler kind of get miffed at me for giving away all the good secrets. So this one here, this one is the juice. You're going to like this one. And it's it's so simple and it makes so much sense. It's one of those things. It's like the Doritos taco, right? It's like, why didn't you think of that before? It's a no brainer. This is pretty much along those same lines. And it's super, super effective. It's what I use to catch the biggest fish that I caught out here today on that lipless crankbait. And I'm telling you what, that fish almost pulled my arm off. You know, it hit the rod so hard, it nearly snatched the rod out of my arm. So let's go out on the water and let's go ahead and walk through some of these retrieves, some of the things that I'm doing. And you can see just exactly how I'm working it, why they're different and why those bass find them so appealing. Okay, we've got this black and blue half ounce jig. It's got some rattles on it. Got a little June bug colored box of crawl and we're going to toss it out and I'm before I engage it I'm just going to let it go down I'm going to let it go down until I'm sure it's on the bottom then I will engage it that way I know um, I gave it plenty of slack and then we're just going to kind of start moving it put a little tautness in the line just a little bit and we're going to start stitching that line just like that pinching that line in, in between our fingers and we're going to start just twitching it like that and what that does is that just gives a little natural movement on that jig. It causes that skirt to flutter. It causes those rattles to rattle just a little bit. And it acts just like a natural bait um, the way a crawfish or the way a... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, ooh, I was getting bit. Come on back, buddy. Come on. I was getting bit. Because that's what I'm talking about. So then get him to come back. But stitching, stitching your line like that can be an effective way to attract those bass' attention. It's subtle. It's, it's not overpowering. You know, on a pressured lake, on a highly pressured day, or a, on a day where they don't really want to play. You can use something like that to great effect. Just pinch it between your fingers and just stitch like that. It's a great way. It causes that little subtle change of direction. It's something that a lot of guys just don't do. Now, when it comes to these retrieves and the things that you want to do, it's pretty easy, right? You want to cast your bait out there. 
to the first type and you just kind of want to reel it in like this and then stop and let it fall and then just reel it in nice and slow and then stop and let it fall and that creates a change of direction that creates a different sort of movement that might catch a pursuing bass off guard just do like that and just kind of let it drop a lot of times you will just get straight hammered on that drop so again I'm not particularly winding it fast I'm not winding it evenly I'm doing it differently and then I just kill it and then I just start moving it again reeling it in again and then I just kill it and I have gotten like I said I've gotten a lot of strikes on that fall you'll feel it I mean you'll just feel it load up caught some really nice fish doing that now the other thing that I like to do and this is something that you don't see a lot of people doing at all and that is it's almost like working it like a jerk bait where I'm twitching it and then giving it a few cranks and then twitching it and then giving it a few cranks and I have caught some straight toads doing this you know so very much like fishing a, a jerk bait and a lipless you know combined I'm cranking it along and then I'll give it a couple of quick jerks and then crank it along and then give it a couple of jerks here and there it works very very well caught some nice toads doing that just like that and that again that creates that change of direction that creates that change of movement that we're looking for well that the bass are looking for some of the biggest fish I've ever caught it I caught doing that There we go, I got him. That's a nice one too. No, oh, you weren't getting off. So as you see, it's not really that complicated. It's not really that hard. There's not a lot to it. But the thing is, is a lot of times you will have a bass trailing your bait and you don't even know it. You might have two or three down there in the depths staring at your bait, following it along, and they're just watching it. They're curious and they're watching it. You need to give them a reason to commit. And one of the best ways to do that is with a change of direction. And as you saw in the video, you saw how I was working it and the fact that I was able to catch fish doing it like that, like really hard bites, no doubters. And we love those types of bites. And as far as working the jig, stitching a jig like that, that is an old school method that I have seen for years. I've seen the old timers, they've been stitching jigs when I was a kid. You know, I would see them sitting on their chairs on a dock, you know, with their cold beer on one side and they just have their line out and they'd just be stitching that line with a jig on there. They'd have a curly tail grub on a ball headed jig or something and they'd just be stitching that line. And that's what they did slow and methodically. And they caught fish. It works. So it's something that if you're not doing, I really highly suggest you do. Now, you can do it with a Texas rig, too. You know, it doesn't have to be just with a jig. You can stitch a Texas rig, any bottom bouncing technique. You can stitch a Ned rig. You can stitch a shaky head. Any type of bottom bouncing technique you can stitch. Now, don't go overboard and really snatch on it with just little tips, you know, little, little, little taps, little tugs on it, and that will give it subtle movement. Because if you're yanking it all over the place, you're going to end up scaring those bass away. And that is the opposite of what you're trying to do. So bear that in mind. When you're out there on the water, always think with your mind's eye how that bait looks underwater. Think about how it looks to the bass. 
you know, we're talking about manufacturing bites. We're talking about having the power to create bites, to put ourselves on fish. And this is all part of that process. So picture it in your mind how that bait is performing. Do you want it to be, you know, be just a straight line or do you want it to kind of dart and jerk and kind of, you know, move a little bit and not really be predictable and look more natural? Because that's the thing is predictability is not natural. Uh, natural things are not predictable, and that's why the bass are drawn to them. They don't want to miss out. They think that that thing is going to get away, and they have to strike it. So bear that in mind. Try out those retrieves, and I know you'll like the results. And now, without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for. The winner of the hashtag Big Giveaway prize pack. And here's your winner. Congratulations. Email me at lowbrow underscore fishing at yahoo.com. That's lowbrow underscore fishing at yahoo.com. And I will contact you and we will go about verifying your identity so I can get this prize pack out to you as soon as possible. Congratulations. And thanks to everyone who participated. It was overwhelming. It was great. The hundreds of people that threw their name in the hat to be a part of this giveaway. I was blown away. So thank you all for participating. So there you have it. With just a few subtle tweaks to your retrieves and your presentations, you can really drastically change your outcome out on the water. It's something pro anglers do, and they really don't talk about it too much. But if you try these retrieves, I'm telling you, you're going to see an immediate improvement in how well you do out on the water. Thanks for watching Low Brow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.